If you want your footage to look cinematic, there are some rules you need to follow. It's way more than turning on your camera and hitting record. If some of you guys out there are already shooting in manual mode instead of auto mode on your camera, that's perfect, you're on the right track. But there are some more rules you need to follow if you want to be getting that cinematic video that you've been seeing and wanting to get but wondering why you can't get it and I will tell you why you can't get it in this video and you'll be getting it by the end of this video, so here we go. Number one, of course, you'll want to turn on your camera. The camera is now on. So, rule number one is you need to make sure you are filming in the highest quality possible that your camera allows. Now, for some camera manufacturers, I won't mention any names, <coughs> Canon, um, they uh, unfortunately don't let you have good autofocus and they crop in a ton when you shoot 4K video. So basically what I'm trying to say here is shoot in the highest quality you want to be filming in and basically just trying to let you know, don't shoot in 480p, don't shoot in 720p, shoot in 1080p or 4K. You make the decision, but make sure you choose either 1080p or 4K on your camera. Unless you have a bunch of money and you've got an 8K camera, then don't watch this video because you're just, I can't stand people with 8K cameras. Uh, just kidding. So first thing you want to do is you want to hit menu on your camera and you will want to go to movie record size. It may be different depending on your manufacturer. This is a Canon camera, so this is how it would be done on most Canon DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, but go and read your manual if you want to. No one reads manuals. Go watch a YouTube video if you can't find your movie record size, but it's pretty easy. It should be in your movie settings. Click on movie record size. You will see you have a couple options. This camera shoots up to 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080. That's perfect. We want to shoot in 1080p. We don't want to use 640, 480, or 1280 by 720. Those are pretty low quality options. Basically, the two good qualities that people are using today are 1080p and 4K. I don't have to say it again, you know. Now you might be wondering, what is the 24 and the 30? Well, we are on to rule number two. If you want to be shooting cinematic videos, do not use 30 frames per second. You might think 30 frames per second is normal, it's standard, right? Well, yeah, it's standard for like your random cell phone video, but if you want cinematic video and you want your videos to look like the big Hollywood movies, you need to shoot 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second is the Hollywood standard. It's also closest to how your eyes see. So using 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second is no good. I never use 30 frames per second. I will use 60 frames per second sometimes, but that is if I'm going to slow the video down to 24 frames per second. I use 120 frames per second and 60 frames per second if I'm gonna slow it down. My final product is always gonna be output in 24 frames per second, not 30, not 60. If you shoot and render out your video at 60 frames per second, it looks too smooth. It's very like smooth and unnatural seeming and it kind of has like a video game feel to it. If you do 30 frames per second, it kind of looks like TV, like just watching the news. It's not cinematic, it's just like, eh. But 24 frames per second, Though it may seem counterintuitive, no, you don't want to shoot 15 frames per second, but 24 frames per second is the one you want to be shooting in. And on this camera, you choose that in the same movie record size setting. So as you can see, we have 1080p on the top and 1080p under that. But the 1080p on the top says 30, and the 1080p under that says 24. You want to choose the 24 frames per second option, not the 30 frames per second option. Perfect. Now, we are on to rule number three, the shutter speed. You may have not even thought of this. I never thought of this until I knew, but when you're on your camera, you will notice that there is an option for shutter speed, just like if you're shooting photos in manual, and you may know that if you set your shutter speed to something high and take a photo, then it will freeze that in time. But if you set your shutter speed really low, it'll blur it. And so usually you want your shutter speed high so you don't get blurry images. Well, in video, you want your shutter speed to actually be pretty low. Basically the formula is to take the frame rate you are shooting in and multiply multiply it by two. It's really easy. We're shooting in 24 frames per second. So multiply that by two, you get 48. And this camera can't get to 1 48th of a second. So we'll do it to the next best thing. 1 50th of a second. That's a one slash 50. 
So basically, 1 50th of a second is twice the frame rate, and it will get you the perfect amount of motion blur for your video. So to give you an idea, here's an example of me waving. Right now, the shutter speed on the camera is set very high. It looks unnatural and choppy. It doesn't look smooth. It doesn't look like how your eyes see. It's a choppy video-y look. Now, here's a video of me waving my hand, but I have set the shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. And as you can see, there is a perfect natural amount of motion blur. Now, if we slow this down, you can see each frame has a blur. It's just like how your eyes see things. Try moving your hand in front of your face really fast. Go like this. What do you see? Do you see little images of your hands going by? No, you see a blur. It blurs by. So, if you want your video to look cinematic, it needs to blur. You need to shoot at 1 50th of a second if you're shooting 24 frames per second. Say you're shooting at 60 frames per second because you want to slow it down later. Multiply 60 by 2. That's 120. Wait, let's make sure I'm right. Yes, 120. So yes, if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, then just multiply it by two and shoot at one 120th of a second. That's one slash one two zero. One 120th of a second. And for any other frame rate you're shooting, even if you do decide to shoot 30 frames per second or you're shooting 120 or 240 or 960, whatever, just multiply it by two and then you just crank up your shutter to one and what you multiply by two, what that number is. So that's why we do 1 50th of a second. So just remember, you're shooting 24 frames per second, double that, 1 50th of a second. Just leave it on there for the whole video. Yeah, it might be tempting if the lighting is changing, don't change your shutter speed. If anything, change it to lower, change it to 1 30th of a second. Don't go higher. You don't want that choppy motion, you want smooth, blurred motion. Now we're on to rule number four, moving right along. So. You have set your shutter to 1 50th of a second. Perfect. But you notice when you're outside and you're filming, wait a minute, everything is too light. What do I do? Do I crank up the aperture? Do I turn down the ISO? Well, we'll get to aperture and ISO here in a minute. But what you need to get your video darker is no, don't crank up the shutter speed. Don't go to 100th of a second or 1 500th of a second or 1 2000th of a second. Don't do that. Then you'll get the choppy motion that we were talking about. No, there's a little tool you need. It's called an ND filter. This is an ND filter. Basically, what ND filters are is they're like sunglasses for your camera. So right now you can see your camera is all white and washed out. Well, put this on the front and it will darken your video to a perfect amount. Now, some ND filters on the market are set. You put it on and that is a set amount. If you need it to be darker, then you get out a darker ND filter. If you need it to be lighter, get out a lighter ND filter. But for video and run and gun and what I like to do, I love my Tiffin ND filter that is variable. As you turn it, as you can see, it gets dark and it gets bright. So basically it's just whatever spot you've turned the dial to, it gets darker and brighter. And it's perfect because now I don't have to carry around a bunch of ND filters. I can just screw this to the front of my camera and then turn it based on how much light I need, based on the conditions, based on how much lighting I have, or based on how bright the sun is. So now we can shoot our video and if the exposure ever changes or we have to go to a different location, all I have to do is turn the dial on the ND filter and now we have adjusted for the new lighting conditions without changing our shutter speed. Now, I'm gonna link some ND filters for you to get below. I recommend the Tiffin variable ND filters because they are super high quality, but there are some Polar Pro and Freewell variable ND filters that are very good quality as well. And I will link one cheaper Amazon ND filter down below that you can check out if you don't have 150 or $200 for an ND filter. Okay, rule number five. Five. So rule number five is talking about aperture and ISO. If you don't know what those things are, I'll explain them really fast. So ISO is image sensitivity or sensor sensitivity technically. It's how sensitive the sensor is to light. When you're shooting at ISO 100, the image sensor in your camera is not very sensitive to light. So your image is darker. If you're shooting at ISO 1600 or 3200 or 6400, the sensor is very sensitive to light and it brings in a lot of light. But this is just artificial gain. This is not actually letting more light 
light into the camera. So if you turn up your ISO to 6400, it's gonna be super grainy and messy and the quality is gonna be lower. So keep your ISO as low as possible. Yeah, sometimes you will have to turn it up a little bit to accommodate for those low light situations, but I would never really go over ISO 1600. Uh, that's basically as high as most cameras get good video. And for my cameras, I personally don't go over ISO 800 ever, and I try to keep it under ISO 400 for the most part because it just gets so grainy. Some really expensive high-end cameras though can go a lot higher, but yeah, you know, for most cheaper cameras, keep it under ISO 1600. If you need more light, then get more lights or uh, check and make sure your ND filter isn't turned. And if you're like in an indoor situation without much light, you don't even need an ND filter, take the thing off. And then the other thing is aperture. So here's an example of a picture taken at a high aperture. Now you can see my wonderful face in this photo and you can see the background. So everything's in focus. So you can see my face is in perfect focus. Everything's sharp and you can see the background. Everything's pretty much in focus. Everything is pretty sharp. Now, look at this photo. You can see my wonderful face yet again, but look at that background. Look how fuzzy that background is. It's so soft. It looks really cool. It looks cinematic. It looks photogenic. Everything good about photo and video, it looks good. The difference in these pictures is aperture. The first photo was taken at a high aperture. This one was taken at an aperture of about 16. F16 was the aperture for that photo. And this aperture was taken at F2.8. And you can see the background is very fuzzy and very pleasant looking. So basically the lower your aperture, the more light is being let into the camera and the fuzzier your background is going to be. One thing you can do with aperture to make your videos look more cinematic is to use a lower number aperture to make your backgrounds fuzzy and your subjects really stand out. That really adds to cinematic effect. And the other thing aperture is good for is exposure. If say you don't have your ND filter, you forgot it or you lost it or you don't have one and you can't afford even the cheapest of ND filters, you can turn up your aperture and it will darken the image at the expense of losing the shallow depth of field. Those beautiful fuzzy backgrounds won't be there, but you will close it down and let less light into the camera. And so it can be useful in a pinch and it's also useful if you purposely are filming like a landscape and you want to get a big wide open expanse and your subject all in focus. You don't want any separation. Then you shoot at a high aperture. But remember a high aperture is going to let in way less light. So if you need more light let into your camera, if it's too dark, turn your aperture all the way down, go to the lowest number possible and that will let in the most light. So now you know everything about exposure. You know how to expose, you know how to focus. You've got all this stuff down for making your footage look cinematic. Now we're gonna move on to color. So with our cameras, most of us are using cameras that shoot 8-bit color. So basically that's most cheap cameras. Some more expensive cameras shoot 10-bit color and even more expensive cinema cameras shoot raw where you can change all that stuff later and it doesn't even matter. But for most of us, we're using cameras like this, 8-bit color cameras. So what you're gonna want to do is you're going to want to make sure first before you shoot that your white balance is set right. White balance is basically how orange or blue your photo is to put it in really basic terms. So before you start filming, go on your camera and look in your screen. Do all the colors look natural or are they looking way too orange or way too blue? Figure out on your camera how to get to your white balance settings. And basically all you need to do is choose either sunny or cloudy, or I like to do manual white balance where you set the actual Kelvin and then just make sure you leave it on there. Don't let it be on auto white balance because then it will be changing the color of the image throughout the video. And that looks really amateur. Next, go onto your camera and try to find your most neutral color profile. So basically go on your camera and don't use vivid, don't use landscape color. Go and try to find either standard, and if you're using Canon, you can use faithful or neutral. 
But what I prefer to do is to go in and set your settings so that your contrast is low. That gets you more light. And once you have your contrast set low, you can set your saturation a little bit low. Basically, you're trying to flatten out the colors. Here's an example of this video right now that you're watching. Here it is with flat colors. This is getting me the most color data to work with. Now, here's the color grade back on it. So you can see that the colors look way better, but I'm not letting the camera color grade. I want to be able to color grade. So I want a clean slate to be working with and not a already graded slate so that I can do all the color grading I want. Now don't push it too hard with these 8-bit cameras. Unless you have a 10-bit color camera or a raw camera, then you aren't able to color grade that much. So don't push the color grade too much. Don't turn down the contrast and saturation too much, but just a little bit, just enough so that you can do some minor color grading to make the video look a little better. I have videos already on color grading and I'll be making more videos on color grading so you can go check those out on my channel. And we aren't gonna go into color grading right now, but this is all the stuff you need to do in camera and on camera to make your footage more cinematic. This gets everything ready. You now have really good video to be working with in your editor and you have the makings for an incredibly beautiful cinematic production. So now that you know the rules on how to get awesome, beautiful, stunning, cinematic footage that you've been wanting to get but haven't been able to get until now, I have provided you, I have enlightened you with what you need to know to get this footage. Use my links in the description to go and check out those ND filters I was telling you about because yeah, if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit at no extra cost to you, of course. So how about you thank me by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Click on my head right now and you can subscribe. It's so easy. You should basically just do it. Your thumb is hovering over it, I know. Just do it, click that subscribe. Click up here on this video and it will take you to my most recent upload. And down here is a video that I made that YouTube thinks you should watch, so watch that because YouTube, I guess it knows what it's doing because that is a really good video. I'm telling you, I like that video.